Hi guys. Hope everybody had a good holiday weekend. Um, we didn't do anything as usual, but that's fine with me. Um, Saturday it actually rained and we had some thunderstorms come through. It lasted pretty much all day. So I literally took a shower and changed into sweats and watched movies all day. It was fabulous. Um, I just put on a pot of chili and what else is happening? There's really not a whole lot. I do want to remind you um, that September is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. So um, pay attention to your body because ovarian cancer whispers and can be just thought to be so many other normal things. But if your symptoms persist, please get it looked into because it can be overlooked so easily. Um, mine was almost everyone's is, and that's why you get diagnosed when you're stage three and four instead of earlier. Um, I've listed the symptoms that I had before in other videos, but I just real quickly here, um, the symptoms that I had was bloating in my abdominal area that I'd never had before, just poof, all of a sudden was there. I had bowel issues that were uncontrollable and fatigue and low back pain. And I think that was the most predominant symptoms that I, that I had. And the way that I got um, diagnosed was nine years before that, I had had a hysterectomy and they left the ovaries because I told them to because I was only 47. And then they they turned on me and um, I got a, a really painful cyst on one of them. But by then I'd already been through menopause and my doctor said, you're not supposed to get cysts on your ovaries after you go through menopause, which makes sense. So that led me up to gynecology and then one thing led to another and that is my story. If you would like me to repeat my story and do a full video on everything that happened to me throughout, I'm happy to do that. But mostly I just, um, I just want everyone to stay aware and not ignore things that you shouldn't ignore. And then just briefly, there's something bugging me and I just saw it on a news um, outlet show. I don't know if you have heard of the Abby and Libby murders in Delphi, Indiana. It's national news. It was national news. Um, it happened in 2017 and they still haven't caught the person or persons who killed these little girls. 13 and 14 years old, they had a day off from school and they wanted to go walking and hiking through um, on the Mon Monon Trail and across this old bridge. And where they lived, um, it, it's common for people to hike up there and go across the bridge. Um, it's a little dangerous, but it's not like, you know, there's no way you're doing that. So one of the girls' sisters dropped them off and they had a pickup time all arranged and one of their dads was going to pick them up at a specified time, but they were never seen alive again. And the maddening thing about this case, and I'm not a police officer, I, I don't know how the families can keep it together. I would be screaming and stomping my feet and trying to break down the doors at the police station multiple times a day because it just seems like they just keep slipping back in the mud. They won't give any information, like any. And then at the beginning, they released a composite drawing because Libby, um, on their walk, she saw this man coming towards them from the other way. And she had the wherewithal 
or the instinct or something told her to take his picture to film him. And she left her phone in her pocket and it was filming. And you can hear him say, guys, down the hill. He's got a very distinctive voice. Um, it, it, Like I said, I'm not a police officer, but it should have been cut and dry. Just, it just should have been. They won't give any information about how the girls died, the causes of death. They said they don't want to do that because it's so um, grotesque or inhumane or, or whatever reason they're giving. So the families, I don't think, even know what the actual cause of death was. They have unraveled things a little bit to know that it was a catfishing, um, probably a catfishing expedition on the part of this guy. Um, and I mean, these are little girls. They have access to their phones. They have access to computers and these guys are good. They are good at what they do. And unfortunately, um, they believe that they were enticed to go up there to the bridge so they could meet this guy who, you know, he was using different pictures, what didn't look like him at all. Um, so they did get that far and release that information. And then two years later, after they released the composite drawing and, and the um, voice of saying down the hill, then they release a new composite drawing that looks absolutely nothing like the first composite drawing. If you want to, you know, I mean, Google it. It is very, very interesting. Or don't Google it because this case, I don't even know these girls. It happened in my state. I don't know if that's why I, I thought about it ever since it happened. I, I mean, I don't know. But it just seems like the police are keeping everyone at arm's length to know any information. And I know they can't release everything because then they never will find who did it. They have to keep some things close to their chest. But, you know, this composite drawing looks nothing like the second composite drawing, even age. The second guy looks way younger than the first guy did. And I don't know, it just I just caught this on TV a minute ago and it just brought it all back. Um, some people have said, like at the beginning of the case, that, um, you know, well, those little girls shouldn't have been out walking across the bridge or out hiking like that that's neither here nor there. They were, they did it. And like I said, everybody does it up there. It's, it's a, it's a bridge and a park and a trail and, and nobody thought anything of it. And it's not like they snuck up there, you know, they asked permission to go and it was a school day off in February. And so it was a little cold, but it was warm ish for February in Indiana. So they wanted to get out of the house. So I don't know. It said that currently, like today, um, there's police officers with metal detectors and stuff looking through a creek. I don't know. This phone keeps sliding down. And um, so I don't know what they're looking for. The the guys on the news said they surmise that they're looking for some kind of computer, hard drive, thumb drive, whatever, that maybe it will help. So it was, um, they went on their little hike on February 13th, 2017. And so it's gonna be six years this coming February that they were murdered. They were found the next day on Valentine's Day. And it just breaks my heart. These kids, 
They just don't know the dangers of the internet. I mean, even as adults, we can easily get sucked in. And then when you think about it, it's like, why did I do that? Or why didn't I see this? Or like the other day I had a um, text message. Yeah, it was a text from United States Postal Service. It looked like I read it very carefully. There was no misspelled words. Um, and it said that some packages were I'm going to be held up for delivery if I couldn't confirm my address. Well, I always have packages coming here and I had just ordered some things. And so I thought, well, I don't want that to happen. And it's um, had a form to fill out name, address, email address, phone number, which obviously they already have my phone number. And I will admit to you, I filled out the stupid form and sent it. And then 20 minutes later, my husband gets the same text message from this. And I'm like, oh my God. So I got into Google and I got into my email and I set up all my you know, read it on my safety features and change my password. And I mean, I think I'm okay, but it's just so easy. It's just so easy. It's like, I hate, I just, I hate the internet because I just don't click on anything. I mean, that's the best advice. Don't click on anything. And the people who are out there that are trying to catch these people, you know, God bless you, because that's the only way you can do it is by pretending that you are something that you're not, because they're pretending that there's something that they're not. And you can't monitor your kids every minute of every day. It's not possible, but it's a scary, scary world. And it's an even more terrifying place when you're on the internet. So it just makes me want to just, you know, crawl in a hole, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have to learn to be more careful. <laughs> okay, so that's my story for today. Um, and my little stupid action that I did. Why is this phone keep falling? So this week I have got a jewelry case coming and I can show you guys that when it gets here. It's taken a few days to come though, for some reason. And I mean, that's all I got. I'll, I'm thinking about doing a day in the life, maybe Wednesday. So I can see you then if you're interested in that. And I will let you guys go until the next time. Bye, guys.